DeBoer is 111 and 11 or something like that, or 104 and 11. I, I should probably do some research, look up the stat, but it's like over 111 as a head coach. <laughs> Winners win. Like that's that's a terrible analysis, but some guys do just find a way. To- no, but I'm so proud of, to hear that come out of your mouth. I mean, Mr. Postgame win expectancy would not say winners win. <laughs> but I am appreciative that you still embrace the winners win side of this. You've Don't got you kind of feel like certain that. coaches find a way? Yes, yes. of course. Usually, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I Tom um, did a stellar job of live blogging this game too. Like w- was dialed in and you know had way more to talk about than I did having to live blog the ACC championship. I mean, you at least had swings and like big <laughs> plays. And it was so funny. Everybody was like, check out Tom's live blog. He did a good job of including highlights. And it was really funny because when I was doing the ACC game, I, I was had highlights in, to put was, in. That's I was scanning the-, <laughs> the Florida State official account, the Louisville official account, the ACC official account, the ESPN <laughs> official account. There were no highlights. Yeah, mm-hmm. good highlights in there. But it, yeah, like what, how, how'd you, how'd you read uh, Washington, Oregon? Um, it was, it was a, it's a tough get like Washington. It is a weird team to kind of figure out. Like I've, I've said, it's a wagon all sing all year, but I still like the first time that these two teams played, I thought Oregon would win. And I thought Oregon would win the rematch and they didn't win either one. And it's kind of like something with buds touching it. Like Kalen DeBoer's teams just always seem to find a way. They came out very motivated, clearly, to win this game. And I think that they found something that worked. And they did it repeatedly. Like, there were a whole lot of corner routes that they were hitting against this Oregon team. And Oregon, like, if you look defensively all year long, slot receivers have tended to do well against them. Mm. So they put a Dunze in the in the slot a lot. He had a huge game. McMillan comes back. He's put in the slot. Like Jalen Polk had been there most of the season with McMillan out, but McMillan comes back. He's healthy. He's in the slot. He has a huge game. And then they figured out how to take away what Oregon does well offensively. Like it's kind of the same similar approach that what Georgia tried to do with Milrow, but Milrow was able to beat him. They took away Bo Nix's strength. Bo Nix wasn't able to beat him. And I think Washington's defensive line played incredibly well and they pressured Bo Nix in the pocket, and they harassed him more than he has been harassed because that offensive line for Oregon on the season has done a terrific job of protecting him and giving him time. That was not the case as well on Friday night. And then I also think, like, I I love Michael Penix. He was not the MVP of that game. They gave it to him, but he wasn't. Dylan Johnson. Dylan Johnson was the MVP of that game. Dylan Johnson ran for 152 yards. He ran for two touchdowns. He threw for as many touchdowns as Michael Penix did. He had a touchdown pass. And it was one of the things I'm sitting there watching this game and I'm thinking, man, because I think Dylan Johnson's claim to fame was the Instagram post he put out when he announced his transfer, when he kind of dogged Mike Leach. And then what happened, you know, the tragedy happened shortly afterwards. And it was just really bad timing on his part. But eliminating that like i know dylan johnson is from mississippi and maybe he just wanted to be close to home but man you are too good at running the ball to have ever gone to mississippi state in the first place he's had nearly as many carries this year as he did in his entire career with the bulldogs because he was playing in an air raid offense and i think it was nice for him because he went to washington clearly because he wanted a chance to showcase his ability as a complete runner not just a guy who can catch passes out of the backfield And for him to have that kind of performance in the spotlight in the Pac-12 championship game to clinch his team's conference title, to clinch a playoff berth, I think is huge for him. I think he's been a tremendous asset to them over the second half of the season when they've started to lean more into their run game. And I think that if the Washington team that we saw Friday night plays like that in the playoff, that team has a legitimate shot to win the whole damn thing. That they are just so good at breaking your coverage rules. And like I mm. I bet Oregon, I thought Oregon was gonna win. I thought Oregon was gonna win pretty handily. And most of that was because of how Penix had looked for about the past five weeks, which to me was hurt. Like short arm in the ball, just missing guys that normally he doesn't miss. I don't know what he took. 
like you know Popeyes, spinach, Superman potion, what, what whatever you want to go with here. You know, it anti pain inhaler, what whatever. Like you guys saw, my, like I got, I got some great pop. green juice out of the CBS Sports <laughs> HQ. Uh, you know, I was sitting there, I was like, man, I haven't had any vegetables. I'm gonna get one of these green juices to be able to put it in my body on this work trip. Yeah, something. Michael Penix has not looked that good in over a month, guys. Like that mm -hmm. was, was I, I was watching, like, oh, oh, I'm dead here. P Penix is fine, and and this is uh, this is tremendous work by Washington. The, the the overwhelming feeling I have come away from this game is how off balance Washington kept Oregon's defense. Like I kept watching for it, like, is Penix really hurt? Is his ribs? What 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 is going on here? Oregon barely touched him. Like they didn't get a lot of like okay they didn't get the sack but they did get a nice pop on the guy, they just kept him off balance. Washington's offensive line just blocked their butts off, but they also did a nice job of using formation and motion to figure out kind of what the coverage rules were going to be to out leverage Oregon multiple times. Like their screen stuff in the first half, like throughout the first twenty minutes, I'm like, all right, Penix isn't making big time throws here. A lot of these are horizontal balls behind the line of scrimmage. And their 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 edge guys are blocking extremely well. Like their their skill guys are blocking, and Oregon is out leveraged or they're out gapped. And eventually they were able to able to hit him with that Dylan Johnson stuff. To Tom's point, I that is just a great job of coaching. I mean, the, just DeBoer kind of won in that game. Mm -hmm. I, I also and grub, think, I guess. Yeah, Sorry, I, I think like. It's a complicated game, but it's also very simple. And maybe it's one of those things that we kind of overlooked because, you know, when we're in charge of covering the entire country. You can get kind of lost in some of the details. But the fact that Jalen McMillan was kind of banged up all year and Washington struggled at times, maybe we didn't do a good enough job of kind of connecting those dots. Because at the end of the day, when you've got Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, and Jalen Polk, there really aren't many defenses in this country that can do a good job of stopping your offense mm, because you can't yeah. cover all three of them. And we saw that on Friday night, all three were on the field and all three were as close to hundred percent healthy as they have been since the beginning of the season. And they cooked Oregon time and time again. And that's why I think if that offense is healthy going into the playoff, they've got a really good shot against anybody they face. To, uh, to shout out Quinn and Williams, you know, Y'all had a great conversation with Roquan Smith as well. But, like, that's why we're going to talk about those Alabama offenses as, like, legendary. Mm -hmm. What in the world is a college secondary going to do when you've got to do three NFL wide receivers at once? Mm -hmm. college, college offenses don't have three NFL wide <laughs> receivers at once. Yeah. You know, it's very very unique um great job of you know recruiting evaluation development you know the way that they've been able to put it all together uh there for the huskies